Nicole Waters is a conscientious, workaholic woman who takes initiative even when she's not asked to. As an example, she creates a thick report about a business venture for her boss, Kimberly Price. Nicole is doing her daily jogging when her boss calls her. She stops near a park wedding, so she has to whisper while breathing loudly. Her boss tells her to come early next Monday to talk about a meeting they're supposed to prepare for. Nicole is so distracted she bumps into the waiter, which causes some glasses to fall and disrupts the park wedding. Embarrassed, she excuses herself and wishes the newlyweds the best. When she gets home, she feels energized to make that report, even though Kim didn't tell her that she needed one. Nicole's housemate, Maggie, finds it ridiculous that Nicole chooses to work during the weekend. Monday comes, and Nicole is excited to show her thick report to Kim. Monica, her coworker, greets her and asks why she's so excited. Nicole tells Monica that she's finally done the one report that will ultimately get her that promotion. Monica reminds her of several things. First, Nicole has been saying that since she started working for the firm. Second, taking initiative is good, but not all the time. She advises her to always ask before doing things, especially since Kim hadn't exactly asked her to make a report. And fate seems to support this advice. When Kim arrives, Nicole shows her report. But to her dismay, Kim has already landed the contract. It happened over the weekend, a few hours after she called her. This means Nicole's thick report, and her efforts to get that promotion, have gone to waste. Her boss gives her a piece of advice. Being a workaholic is not as effective as it was before, especially if working alone. Teamwork is the new trend, so Nicole should loosen up a bit. Feeling disappointed about what happened, Nicole chooses to spend her lunchtime in a nearby park. She reflects on what her boss said. She denies to herself that she's a workaholic, just overly organized. But she can't concentrate because a busker is singing a few feet from her. She asks him if he can play another song. The lady beside Nicole enjoys the song, though, so she asks why she should change it. Nicole says it reminds her of her ex-boyfriend whom she broke up with a year ago. For the third time that day, Nicole receives another piece of advice. The lady tells her to move on. The busker continues singing the song, so Nicole brings out her earphones, stubbornly refusing to listen to the lady or the busker. The next day, she comes to the office and finds everyone gathered around. It seems like Kim has an announcement to make. Is it a promotion for her? No, she's announcing her engagement to Bradley, one of the executives in the company. And there's a surprise for Nicole, too. Kim and Bradley appoint her to be their wedding organizer. They are busy people and they want to get this wedding done in two weeks. Nicole's organizational skill under pressure is exactly what they need for their wedding. But, there's a catch. Kim also knows that her assistant is a pessimist when it comes to love and romance. So Bradley suggests getting his nephew Michael to help. Michael is a hopeless romantic, according to him. With Michael working with Nicole, they'll have a perfect wedding for themselves. It turns out, this Michael is none other than the busker from the other day. And now he's walking dogs for a living. Kim asks Nicole and Michael to have a walk, get to know each other a little bit, and start planning for the wedding. They go to a nearby park. From the start, it's clear that Nicole and Michael stand at opposite ends of the character spectrum. Nicole is the type to look for tips on the internet and take notes and make charts and graphs out of them. Michael is the type who goes with the flow, as long as there is romance and simple joys, and doesn't bother taking notes. Michael asks her why she wants to do this wedding planning. She says she wants Kim to be happy. When that happens, it'll be a big plus on her side in getting that promotion. Michael is not someone to judge, so he says he'll leave the planning and organizing part to Nicole. Then he'll take care of the romance part. Nicole agrees, even though she's not used to working with anybody. Opposite to Michael, she judges him. She tells Monica and Maggie how spontaneous he is and seems to not have any direction in life. Also, she doubts that Michael knows anything about weddings. She is a pessimist, so it'll be weird if a man knows more about it than her. But Michael proves her wrong. The next day, Nicole meets with him and a woman named Jeanette. Jeanette is an events coordinator that Michael talked to regarding a possible location for the wedding. The location has been featured in a well-known magazine for wedding venues. Nicole is surprised Michael knows about this but she doesn't. Her cynicism about romantic weddings shows, and it puts Jeanette off. Michael pleads with Nicole not to mess this up because it's hard to book a venue, especially on short notice. Thankfully, she cooperates. After checking the elegant reception hall, Michael invites Nicole to a sandwich shop. He's taken the liberty to change her schedule so they can enjoy a break while looking for possible venues. Nicole is frustrated about this. No one dares change her schedule without permission. Eventually, she relents. Michael brings her to a quaint sandwich shop. There, Nicole finds out more about him. Bradley is his favorite uncle. That's why he agreed to help with the planning. Plus, his romantic nature often leads to the right decisions for people who like sweet things. As for his knowledge about weddings, he learned it from his four sisters. He's the only guy among his siblings. On the other hand, his philosophy about life comes from his father. Michael also praises Nicole for being organized and detailed. It's something that will go a long way in life. But he tells her that sometimes, she needs to loosen up and trust the universe. Of course, Nicole disagrees. But she appreciates knowing more about her partner in this wedding planning. After a few minutes, Michaels offers to get the bill. While he's inside the sandwich shop, Nicole gets a call from Kim. 
She's checking on their progress. Nicole tells her they're just about to go to Crystal Banquet Hall. It's a personal preference of Kim and she would very much like to get married there. However, Nicole receives a text message from a representative from the said venue, telling her the place is already booked. She tells her boss about this development. Both are disappointed, especially Nicole. When Michael comes back, she asks him who he talked to when he changed her schedule. He says no one in his message went to voicemail. No one confirmed the change of schedule, so the events coordinator at Crystal Banquet Hall thought no one would come and gave their schedule to someone else. Michael realizes his mistake and apologizes. Nicole is frantic about it. Booking the place is one thing that will make Kim happy, yet they messed it up. She should have stuck with her schedule, she says. She was better off working alone, she says. She forgets that Michael is still there and can hear her. Then she tells him to go to check the other venues alone while she fixes this mess. However, Nicole comes back home, defeated and feeling guilty about what happened earlier. She never got back the booking for Crystal Banquet Hall. And she feels bad about the way she treated Michael. She tells Maggie about what happened. Maggie can only chide her for her behavior. She tells Nicole she doesn't need to push away a good person who's only willing to help, just because she feels comfortable working alone. Nicole defends her point of view, saying she doesn't need anyone's help. But hearing this now sounds wrong. So, the next day, Nicole comes to Kim's office and informs her that she has lost the booking for her favorite wedding venue. Kim asks if it's Michael's fault. But Nicole takes responsibility for the mishap. Kim looks dubiously at her at first but lets it go. Her next request for Nicole is to check out wedding dresses for her. Due to her busy schedule, she can't come to have a fitting herself. She asks her to choose the beautiful ones. She also tells Nicole that her favorite design is trumpet fit and flare. Inside Nicole's mind, she doesn't know what Kim is talking about. But yes, she'll go with it. Before leaving the office, Nicole meets Peter Banks, the CEO of their company. He knows about her being Kim's wedding planner. He implies that when she pulls off this wedding in two weeks, he'll be very impressed. That's Nicole's cue about who to impress if she wants to have that promotion. However, she now acknowledges that she can't do this alone. She recognizes she needs someone's help, especially since doesn't know a thing about weddings or wedding dresses. She calls Michael. He's busy at the moment, but he tells her to come to the coffee shop where he's at. When she goes there, she finds him singing to a small group of audience. It strikes her heart to realize he's singing one of the songs from her favorite band. After his set, she lets him know how she appreciates his effort to sing the song. In addition, she apologizes for the way she treated him yesterday. Nicole tells him she can organize almost anything. But she needs this wedding to have something special and magical. And that's where Michael comes in. He feels happy to know she recognizes his contribution to this dilemma. Although, he says they need more than magic to pull this off. They need a miracle to make a wedding happen in less than two weeks. After their reconciliation, they go straight to a wedding boutique to choose dresses for Kim. Nicole goes ahead and enumerates what she wants for a wedding dress. Both Michael and the bridal stylist frown at her descriptions. Pockets for a wedding dress. Nah. Michael takes over. He describes Kim's body type, which is voluptuous, and then he asks for dresses with empire designs or trumpet fit and flair. The bridal stylist listens to him and goes to fetch the said dresses. They both have fun checking out the garments brought out by the stylist. Funny enough, there's one dress that has pockets in it. But Michael votes it out. Nicole is learning something new that day. And perhaps, for the first time since becoming her boss wedding planner, she's having the time of her life. While Michael takes a phone call, the stylist convinces Nicole to wear a few dresses. It'll help her choose the right one for her boss. So Nicole wears the dress for a fitting. And that's when Michael sees her. He lets her know she looks stunningly beautiful in the dress. They are having a moment together when the stylist comes in to check on them. Now it looks like Nicole and Michael are the ones about to get married. To break off the awkward scenario, the pair proceeds to their next schedule, picking flowers and cake testing. They chose pink and orange peonies for the flowers. As for the cake, they have differences in taste. But they'll get by, eventually. The next day, they check another possible venue for the wedding. The building has a Greek architectural style. Inside, there's a garden that's perfect for the ceremony. The fountain in the middle, surrounded by lush plants, makes it a magical backdrop when Kim and Bradley say their vows to each other. Nicole and Michael feel this is the right place. They try to haggle the price with the events coordinator. But they might as well try their luck somewhere else. In the end, they manage to book this place. While waiting for the coordinator to prepare the papers, the two talk in the garden. Nicole asks Michael about his philosophy of being free-spirited. She assumes his parents were hippies. But Michael clarifies this. His family is full of type of corporate people, the ones who use the suit and tie as their uniform. He was once a suit and tie guy, until his father passed away. That's when he realized that money is not everything in this world. Since then, he promised himself to focus on the moment and experience life, so that in the end, he won't have any regrets. Because of this philosophy, his family considered him the black sheep. At every reunion, they always compare each other's achievements and who bought the most luxurious watch or rest house. Then, when it comes to Michael, they always look down on his meager singing jobs or dog walking stints. Only his uncle Bradley is understanding of his look in life. That's why he wants to help in making this wedding something unforgettable. 
He tells Nicole that everyone is a romantic, though, and some people. It may be buried deep. He's implying that perhaps, she can also see things the way he does. She just doesn't know it yet. The next day, Kim and Bradley talk to Nicole. They praise her for doing a job well so far, considering the tight schedule. Then Kim asks if she can add more to her plate. She wants to have an engagement party before the wedding. Originally, the couple wanted to do away with it, but it's their relatives that requested to have one. This can be a good way to introduce the families of the bride-to-be and groom-to-be. Nicole takes the challenge. Kim tells her that she and Michael are welcome and they can bring a date each. Nicole isn't keen on bringing a date. And surprisingly, so does Michael. Bradley confirms he's single, which is a surprise for Nicole. This is because as far as she knows, he's trying to get back with his ex. After the couple leaves, she calls Mikahil for help in organizing the party. He agrees. But he also has a favor to ask her. He needs to attend to some personal matters, so he asks her if she can walk some dogs. For the first time, Nicole agrees. She's not fond of the dogs, but she's doing this favor for him. After a few minutes, Michael comes to her, looking amused at her struggle to walk the corgis. It's a positive development that Nicole is not making a huge deal out of this. Also, she's become close to Thorgi, one of the dogs. Michael informs her that the reason for this favor is because of a career opportunity. He just had a meeting with a club owner and he booked two nights of performance in the club. Nicole is so happy for him. She hugs him to express her congratulations. That's when they both realize that perhaps, there's something more than being friendly in the hug. To defuse the awkwardness, Michael politely thanks her for helping him book the gig. She returns the compliment, saying she wouldn't have pulled off the wedding if not for his help. Feeling that they're back to their old dynamics, Michael invites Nicole for dinner, since she took the responsibility for the dogs. She thinks it's a date and looks confused. She thinks he's trying to get back with his ex. But it turns out, it's not meant to be. Nicole says he's an amazing guy, so it's hard to believe things have not worked out for them. Michael says he can say the same thing about her, being single and all that. Nicole confesses the real reason for her singlehood. Remember the ex she mentioned before. She thought that he was the one. She had always pictured her future with him, having a family and owning their house. However, when she asked him about their future, he told her he wasn't ready to take responsibility. That led to their breakup. Then, to add more to her heartache, she found out her ex got engaged to his ex one month after the breakup this made her think that he was always ready to get married. Just not to her. Michael finally understands Nicole's cynicism about love and weddings and romance. It's good to know she can laugh about this now. Also, he likes the idea that he can make her laugh. They get awkward again, so they both talk about safe topics. Like planning the couple's engagement party. That night, Nicole updates her friend Maggie about the wedding plans. It's good and all, but the one thing that Maggie picks up on is her friend's attitude toward Michael. Nicole smiles and tucks her hair behind her ears whenever she says his name. She only does that to people she likes. So Maggie thinks Nicole likes Michael. She tries to deny it while doing the gestures again. Perhaps it will be better for her to recognize she's starting to have more than polite feelings toward her wedding planning buddy. A few days later, Nicole and Michael manage to pull off the engagement party. It's held in a quaint but elegant venue that's perfect for Kim's and Bradley's sophisticated tastes. It's full of relatives from both sides, including some executives from their company. Nicole finds Michael nervous. He admits he doesn't do well with family reunions. She assures him everything will be fine. She encourages him to introduce her to his relatives to shake off his nervousness. But she soon finds out why Michael isn't that eager to talk with relatives. They meet Uncle Trevor, Bradley's brother. He's the kind of uncle that praises you for wearing an expensive watch, but looks down on you for enjoying singing in small coffee shops for pocket change. Nicole can't help but stand up for Mikael. Trevor ignores her and then goes on to say that he has more important things to discuss with Michael's cousin, who has bought a summer house. After Trevor leaves, Mikael sighs and Nicole feels annoyed. He appreciates her for standing up for him. But for now, he needs some fresh air. Just then, Kim and Peter Banks walk to her. The CEO congratulates Nicole for doing an amazing job. Kim supports this, saying she wouldn't have her dream wedding if not for Nicole. Peter opens up the topic of promotions, saying they need people who are detail-oriented and hardworking in their team. Of course, Nicole is more than happy to say she'll take any opportunity to prove herself. Kim says they can talk about this possibility one of these days. Nicole is ecstatic that her hard work is finally coming to fruition. Her boss is recognizing her efforts and is helping her land that promotion. Plus, everything about the wedding is coming off nicely. It looks like nothing can ruin that perfect night. But there's one more thing that Nicole has to face. One that will question her integrity and values. At one point, she overhears Bradley talking to a woman. Over the phone, he tells this mysterious woman that he can see her once the wedding is done. He misses her and can't wait to see her soon. He calls the woman Honey Bunny, a nickname for a mistress. She wants to tell Michael about this. But before she can do so, Kim and Bradley approach her and express their appreciation for their efforts. Plus, Michael needs to drive some of the guests home. So Nicole decides to inform Michael about what she has learned the next day. They meet at the sandwich shop. As expected, Michael doesn't take this lightly. Bradley is his favorite uncle, after all. He wants Nicole to tell Kim. 
but Kim is so happy about the way things are going. In addition, she can't let this ruin the eluded promotion for her. Michael points out that this cheating situation is not about her promotion, but about the couple who are supposed to get married in a few days. Nicole promises to think about this and assures him she'll do the right thing. Michael is still unsure. Perhaps Nicole's cynicism about love and weddings can't be changed at all. That's why all she can think about is the promotion, without regarding the feelings of others. He tells her he's falling for her, but it may not work out because of her views. Later that day, she tells Maggie about this dilemma. Indeed, Nicole doesn't want to ruin Kim's happiness. But it's also true that she doesn't want to ruin her promotion. Maggie knows she'll always figure things out in the end, as she always does. But what about Michael's feelings for her? Nicole makes it sound like it doesn't matter. But it does, especially now that she's falling for him, too. The next day, a big surprise greets Nicole when she enters the office. She got the promotion. Kim and Peter congratulate her, saying she deserves it. Kim also adds that she's never been happier in her life, and it's thanks to her efforts in planning the wedding. Nicole's attempt to tell Kim about Bradley's cheating dissolves, as Kim hugs her in appreciation. The days fly by and Nicole still hasn't come up with the right resolution. She got the promotion, right. But can she tell Kim about the cheating? The wedding day finally comes. Nicole and Michael get there early to make sure everything is in the right order. She still hasn't told Kim and she's afraid it may be too late. Michael tells her he expected her to do the right thing because she's a good person. And that perhaps, he may be able to get rid of her skepticism by loving her. Nicole gets taken aback by this. At that point, she realizes she can't let Kim suffer her entire life at the hands of a cheater. Telling her about it may ruin the wedding and all their hard work. But she's giving Kim a chance to find someone that will truly love her. In the same way, she's giving herself a chance to be loved by someone she loves. Determined, Nicole comes up to Kim and finally tells her about the cheating. Just a few minutes before the ceremony starts. Meanwhile, Mikael is downstairs welcoming Rebecca, Bradley's first wife, and their daughter. They separated amicably and Bradley still fulfills his responsibility, as a father. When he sees his daughter, he calls her Honey Bunny. Michael realizes Badly is not cheating. Rather, he's calling his daughter an endearment that may confuse those who don't know. Immediately, the two of them run upstairs to clear things out. Kim looks devastated, so Bradley immediately clarifies that he calls his daughter Honey Bunny, and that he promised to meet with her after the wedding. Nicole is shocked to find out she's wrong. Thankfully, the couple forgives her for this misunderstanding. If things didn't go as they did, a beautiful wedding may not have happened at all. Once the two are alone, Michael tells Nicole he is proud of her for sticking up for what is right. It almost ruins the wedding, but things turn out well in the end. Nicole apologizes for messing things up. But now that it's over, it's finally time to confess her feelings for him. She loves him for accepting her flaws and correcting her mistakes. Of course, Michael being a romantic guy, simply lets her know his feelings through a kiss. At last, both their hearts have found each other. 